cytometer, which was uh, pretty representative for the flow cytometer in our lab, uh, could detect uh, 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 about 153 nanometer vesicles and 140 nanometer COVID virions. Um, the main difference is, is, is the refractive index between these particles. So the higher refractive index, the smaller particles you can measure, as we have uh, seen before. And uh, now we will look at um, yeah, the impact of, of such a, a pretty straightforward calculation and, and the use of me theory on uh, the physical uh, field. Um, now, once again, here you see uh, this detection limit. Uh, so we can, uh, yeah, based on the scatter detector, measure uh, this part of the vesicle. So, so we still miss the majority. Uh, but this is um, a fraction of particles which has not been thoroughly studied uh, because simply the equipment was not available before. Uh, so uh, we are studying this now in uh, healthy individuals, uh, 224 this year even, and compare that to uh, people uh, with specific diseases in, in AMC. Uh, yeah, and here I marked uh, the, yeah, the approximate diameter range of SARS-CoV-2. Um, from some articles I found it, it's in between somewhere uh, 60 to 80 nanometer up to 160. Uh, you know, we can uh, detect a part of that. Uh, limit of detection for SARS-CoV-2 is, is lower. Uh, so, so this is basically a, a wrong uh, diagram. Um, so what happened in the field of vesicles? So um, yeah, people used uh, flow cytometry and they measured forward scattered light and side scattered light, uh, but they, yeah, the, the big problem there uh, is that the signals have arbitrary units. So, uh, yeah, you measure these dots, and each, each dot is one particle, but you don't know uh, to which size this corresponds. So, uh, in 2008, uh, yeah, people uh, came up with an idea that to use uh, polystyrene beads of uh, 500 nanometers and polystyrene beads of 900 nanometers to set a gate. And a gate in this case means uh, that, uh, yeah, lines were uh, set around these beads. Uh, and then all the particles which uh, fall within these lines, within this gate, um, were uh, thought to be EVs. Uh, and yeah, because uh, EVs at that time were reported as uh, uh, particles smaller than one micrometer, but this seems like a plausible uh, approach. Um, so I had no clue actually uh, whether it was a plausible approach. So, uh, so we did the same in 2012. Uh, we bought some beads. Uh, so beads are, are just plastic or polystyrene calibration particles, spherical. And we measured the side scattering intensity, uh, calibrated the detector. So we, we made it in, in uh, real power in, in milliwatt. Uh, we measure those beads and as you can see and as you would expect uh, the larger the bead uh, the more side scatter we measured on this flow cytometer. Uh, but yeah that's of course not understanding your system. Uh, this is just a measurement but uh, you fully understand this if you back up your measurement with, with a theory. So we used me theory uh, to describe uh, these signals and we took into account the refractive index of polystyrene, which is 1.605 uh, at this uh, wavelength of this flow cytometer. And uh, as you can see, the theory describes the data well. And uh, to show that this approach also worked for uh, particles of a, a lower refractive index, we repeated this experiment um, for silica uh, particles. Uh, silica, it's glass. Uh, the refractive index of these beads was, was uh, 1.445. Uh, and again, uh, this me theory, which we used in the model, uh, described the uh, data very well. Now, and that was a handy tool because now we have a theory uh, which describes our flow set on the well. We could use this theory to predict what would happen for vesicles. So we did. Uh, we, based on the structure, assumed that vesicles um, yeah, had a core shell structure, a shell with refractive index 1.48 based, uh, yeah, based on the composition of, of shells of vesicles and a core of 1.38 plus or minus 0 
based on uh, an estimate of protein concentrations uh, in the lumen of, of vesicles. And then you can see here uh, on the left, you can see uh, in green, uh, yeah, the confidence interval where we would expect vesicles to be for our flow cytoma. And yeah, that you can compare them to the, uh, yeah, for example, to the polystyrene beads, which were used before, uh, to set a gate. Now, the polystyrene bead sizes, which were used, were 500 nanometers and 900 nanometers. And for this flow cytometer, you see that 900 nanometer beads correspond to three and a half micrometer uh, biological particles, but such large vesicles probably don't exist. And 900 or 500 nanometer beads correspond to yeah about 1500 to yeah three and a half micrometer uh, vesicles. So this gate for our flow cytometer um, yeah did not gate or select any vesicles, but but much larger particles, probably platelets or empty platelets, ghost platelets, ghost erythrocytes. Um, yeah, but most likely not vesicles because they are generally reported to be smaller. Uh, another thing which you can do is uh, look at your detection limit. So what is the smallest vesicle uh, we could detect with this flow setter? And the detection limit was uh, somewhere here. It was a rough estimate, um, but uh, this, this smallest bead which we could detect of, of silica, the dimmest bead, uh, we could detect only half of them. So we, we knew we were very close to the detection limit of this instrument. Um, so, um, yeah, assuming that this is the real uh, detection limit, um, this flow cytometer could measure vesicles from about yeah, 300 nanometer to, to maybe 600 nanometer, depending on the exact refractive index of the vesicles. So that's, of course, useful information, because if you, if you know what is your limit, you know what you're studying. Now, that was not all which was going on. Um, yeah, particles below the detection limit were somehow also detected with this flow cytometer, and that was an effect we didn't anticipate. Um, for example, if we took 89 nanometer silica beads, uh, just to go back, uh, this red line is silica, 80 nanome 89 nanometer would be somewhere here. So we at all didn't expect to have any signal from those, uh, but we, we detected some power from those beads. And the same for uh, urine vesicles, uh, which we filtered, uh, since that the large vesicles were gone, and only vesicles smaller than 220 nanometers were left, uh, we also got some signal. And that was more than the background which we got from water. So we were wondering, uh, and uh, yeah, we looked at the configuration of the flow cytometer. So you see here the focused laser beam, uh, the sample stream, which uh, yeah, takes the particles. And this, this effective illumination volume here, um, we calculated and, and estimated based on the geometry that to be around 50 picoliters. Now, from other equipment and flow cytometry, uh, we knew that the concentration of uh, vesicles in this urine sample was around uh, 10 billion EVs per milliliter. And that means that uh, if you don't dilute, uh, on average, more than 500 vesicles were simultaneously illuminated. And we were not aware of that at that time. And um, yeah, we gave this phenomenon uh, a name, swarm detection. Uh, yeah. Uh, this name is based on uh, my uh, uh, colleague uh, who, who is a, a bird watcher and he really liked uh, watching birds and, and, and together we, we came to this name swarm detection inspired by swarms uh, of birds um, but as you can imagine it had quite some impact on the field because uh, yeah uh, without dilution uh, yeah flow cytometers back then just generated uh, artifacts uh, then at the end of the lecture, um, in sum, uh, yeah, I've uh, hoped to, to have taught you something about uh, extracellular vesicles, uh, about flow cytometry, and how you can use flow cytometry to detect uh, and study particles in uh, fluids. Uh, the flow cytometry is uh, largely based on, uh, on light scattering, single particle light scattering, uh, unless you have the swarm detection, but, uh, Obviously, you should pre prevent that because the machine is not designed for uh, 
for, for that. Um, yeah, if you uh, study uh, single particles with flow cytometry and light scattering, uh, think about in which light scattering regime you are, uh, always try to describe your data with theory, and that doesn't only account for light scattering, but, but for any other case. Uh, it doesn't need to be a complicated theory, but you just check the order of magnitude. Is this signal what I expect? Because also what you have seen in this lecture is that manufacturers sometimes try to fool you in order to sell their instrument. Um, yeah, in case of single particle light scattering, don't only consider diameter, uh, but also uh, particle refractive index. Uh, if you make an optical design, also consider polarization. Uh, and generally, not in this lecture, but uh, I would like to let you know uh, to apply look, think, and do. And that was the end of this lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, for making the assignment and your questions. I'm happy to receive any further questions, though. <laughs>